Boys, creeps, thanks for joining me on this hot as hell LA day. It is so hot it's dumb, but that's fine. That's not the point, but I have to mention it because I'm drinking a Syrah, a chilled Syrah instead of red wine today, and it's awesome. It's Cote de Roses. I don't speak French, surprisingly, because I look so French, I know. Stop it. But check this out. There's a freaking rose on the bottom of this bottle and a glass cork. Shut up. I know. It's amazing. And it's perfect. Because it's all about the details. And the man we're talking about today is all about the details. So get your wine, whatever color it may be, and get ready to get creepy. <sighs> so hot. <sighs> AKA the Brand Library, uh, built in 1904 by the father of Glendale, Leslie Coombs Brand, AKA LC Brand. Super cool guy from like, I don't know, Missouri, Michigan, uh, one of the M states, somewhere in the country. And he was a real estate guy. He owned the Los Angeles Abstract Company, the San Fernando Mission Company. He brought electricity and utilities to Glendale. You're welcome, world. Uh, the Pacific Electric Company, he brought with Henry E. Huntington, the Pasadena bro, who's super awesome. And he bought a thousand acres in North Verdugo Hills and was like, I'm gonna build a super awesome place. So his brother-in-law, Nathaniel Dryden, who was this cool architect, built him El Miradero, which was basically his idea and reproduction of uh, this building he saw at the Columbian World Expedition in Chicago in 1893, which is basically the World's Fair, which I love, by the way, because that is where H.H. H. Holmes built his murder hotel. <laughs> Gotta love that guy. What a, what a, what a guy. Um, but yeah, so he was inspired by the, what is it, Arch Indio Saracenic design of the Eastern Pavilion at the World's Fair. And he's like, I want a house that looks like that. So they built one uh, called El Miradero on this plot of land. And he eventually built an air hangar there as well. And he was super eccentric guy. Like he had, what was it? In 1921, I believe he had the fly-in party, which is cause he had his own private air hangar. He shut down the gates to his property and was like, you can come party with me. If you fly in on a private freaking jet plane, thing, whatever it was back then. So people did. And you know, he was, had two wives. First one bit the dust early on. Second, Mary Louise Brand was like, you know, his prime lady gal, you know, loving on, loving on, loving on. It said that Mary Louise and uh, Elsie never had children, which is true, but that does not mean that Elsie never had any kids. Apparently there was a woman named, let me look here on my notes, Bertie Esther Carpenter. I hate the name Esther, by the way. That should just be said. I don't, I'm not a fan of the name. I'm just going to say it. But apparently she was like this 20 something. He met, put her in secretary school, knocked her up. They had two kids. He was like, I'll sell you some land to live on from my San Fernando Mission Company for 10 bucks. She did it. Um, but yeah, Mary Louise obviously never recognized them as children. It's not even confirmed. This is 100% true. Although there's some really convincing evidence that it is. The point is, he might not have been that swell of a man. How we ever thought about that? Because I'm talking about it right now. And the reason it became a park and library is because Bran, since he had no recognized children, gave it to them in his will. And he said, you can have it. You can have my entire land as long as you make it into a public park and library. And they did. Huh. Way to go, Glendale. Although apparently a cousin tried to sue for the land in the house because who wouldn't want to? A place like the El Miradero, of course, you're going to have a death. I would like to assume there's been multiple deaths and we can safely assume that the entire land is a burial ground since it's Southern California. He bought a thousand acres. Of course, there's bodies everywhere. Okay, let's just put that up in the open. But as far as inside of the El Miradero, Brand himself, LC man, that guy bit the dust there. April 10th, 1925, he died after a battle of cancer. But here's what's really interesting. And by the way, Mary Louise stayed there until 1945 when she died in Arizona in a car crash. The funeral was on the land because he decided to have a family cemetery on the land because why wouldn't you? And he had a plane fly overhead that dropped flowers down the procession. 
interesting thing is he's buried underneath a giant pyramid. Of course, so first thought is Mason's. Was he a Mason? Well, I've done a lot of research and I can't find his name on any lodge registry. But that doesn't mean that he wasn't a Mason. Also, I don't think it's so crazy to assume that there's a dark side to Elsie Brand, okay? We're talking early 1900s, okay? He could have been a spiritualist. He could have had seance parts at the house. Everybody talks about how eccentric this guy was, but nobody's saying why. So he had one big party where people flew in. That doesn't make an eccentric person. Here he is, possibly having a second wife and kids who he left nothing to. He's buried underneath the pyramid. He was a rich man, one of the founding people of the greater Los Angeles. It's not crazy to say that he was a Mason. Maybe he was a Illuminati. Maybe he was a Knights Templar. We don't know. Maybe he killed people. That's taking it way too far. But I'm saying we don't know the story of Elsie Coombs because nobody wanted to talk about, not Elsie Coombs, Else Coombs, Lewis Coombs, Leslie Coombs, Brand. God damn it. Unfortunately, there is not a insane amount of paranormal activity recorded at the El Miradero, but there is some stuff, mainly about Brand himself. He died in the house, so obviously naturally makes sense that he'd be haunting it, since it's also his baby, and it's awesome. I would want to stay there. And apparently the most... Stop saying apparently, Malia. According to reports, uh, most activity happens by his portrait, which is the original portrait he had hanging up, and there's also one of Mary Louise. Most they've, rep they've done, they've remodeled the place, but they've kept a lot of it how the house used to be when they lived there, and their artwork's hanging up, including their portraits. So there's one of him and one of his wife, and people say they see his eyes kind of following him, but the most intriguing are the reports of actually seeing Brand walking around, mainly up in the turreted, you walk with this little tiny turret and there's a master bedroom, the public is not allowed. According to some reports, a lot of people have quit because they've been totally freaked out by hearing uh, noises late at night coming from the bedroom when nobody's up in there, seeing people walk down the stairs, and seeing him walk in the front room where his portrait is and where this big, beautiful fireplace is. Funny thing is, when I was there, there was a man that came up to me, he goes, I just have to tell somebody this. Uh, I was standing here, I looked over, I saw a guy kind of fuzzy, I looked around, looked back, and he was disappeared. And then he said he heard somebody say something to him. He turned around there was nobody there. He also said he looked like Brand and he had an EVP recorder in his hand because he was there ghost hunting. Why he felt the need to tell me that, I don't know. He obviously sensed a like-minded individual next to him. Personally, I didn't feel creepy there. Uh, there was a lot of books. It's a library. It makes sense. Uh, but, you know, it felt very, uh, how do I say, new. They've remodeled it, so I couldn't really get, they've, they've done their best to make it feel, at least the front portion, how it would have felt when it was a house. But, you know, I didn't get an essence of them there, unfortunately. The land, however, walking around the grounds of the Brand Park, that felt a little bit creepy to me. There's, a, there's an energy to the place that I can't quite describe. I would love to return and do some ghost hunting myself, which I probably will do now that that guy laid that info on me. But yeah, Brand's probably definitely still there. Why wouldn't he be? And that, my little creeps, is our show. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Let's have a party. I don't know what that means, but I wanted to throw it out there. Let's party together and have a grand old time. You're welcome for that. Chin chin. See you next week where I lay down some delicious information that can get people fired because it's illegal to talk about. What? Bye-bye. <laughs> chin chin. <laughs> big yellow, little yellow, big little yellow, little bit. Thank you for watching my show. <laughs> so nice of you. <laughs> oh my God.